our channel. This is Science Lectures 256. Please consider subscribing, comment in the comment section, and like our video. You can also follow us on X, uh, formerly Twitter, uh, such that you can uh, we can keep you updated with our content. So today we are going to look at, uh, to introduce what we call uh, developmental studies. Developmental studies, it will deal with uh, development and uh, how different countries are developing, what makes different countries lag behind in their development. So what is developmental studies? What we need to know is that developmental studies has basically three features. Um, when we look at developmental studies, it, it um, has what we call a multidisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity, uh, multidisciplinarity. Then it has what we call um, is an approach which has uh, interdisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity, multi, then interdisciplinarity, then finally it has what we call uh, political, political economy, political economy approach. So these three, all the three, uh, combine to form what we call a uh, developmental studies or what we call your yeah, developmental studies. So what does multidisciplinarity mean, interdisciplinarity mean, and political economy approach? We'll start with multidisciplinarity. Multidisciplinarity simply means that developmental studies combines, combines, which combines uh, a variety, a variety of disciplines, disciplines. So it combines many disciplines, many uh, disciplines, many disciplines. For example, it, uh, it has what we call political science. We can have a discipline of political science. We can have a discipline of psychology. Psychology. We can have a discipline of sociology. Sociology. We can have a discipline of environmental science. Environmental. Environmental science and many others and other disciplines all combined that work. that is what we call multidisciplinarity of the aspect of uh, of developmental studies combines a variety of disciplines and such disciplines can include political science psychology sociology environmental sciences and all other disciplines so that is what we refer to as multidisciplinarity so what developmental study does in multidisciplinarity is that it combines uh, it combines all these fields in order to solve to solve problems. So when it combines uh, these disciplines, it provides what we call comprehensive 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 solutions to the available problems within within a, within a locality. So that is what we refer to as multidisciplinarity, combining different uh, different disciplines. Then we have another one which is referred to as interdisciplinarity. Interdisciplinarity simply means that developmental studies distills 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 aspects it distills aspects from from different disciplines, from the different disciplines, from different disciplines, and uses them to solve problems, to solve problems. So in uh, interdisciplinarity, we are distilling knowledge, we are distilling aspects from different disciplines, and we are using the, those aspects to solve problems that are affecting uh, the continent or the society. So that is what we refer to as interdisciplinarity. So wh what we mean by this is that if we have um, a political, if we have a, a discipline like political science, and we have another discipline like environmental science, 
uh, developmental study will be still knowledge from aspects from these disciplines to solve an emerging problem within the society. But before we go further, there is a term, before we go to the political economy approach, there is a term we need to know, and that term is referred to as anthropological history. Anthropological, anthropological history. So anthropological history uh, simply means that uh, uh, it is defined by the, okay, we can say that your present, your present, your present is influenced, is greatly influenced by, by your past. So the present of the present uh, of a given, how present a given country is performing is affected by their past. So that is what we refer to as anthropological history. So this one gives you an image of why history, of why history is very important is very important is very important when dealing with what with the issues of development history is very important when dealing with issues of development because anthropological history tries to show you that our present is being influenced by the past uh, by the past of what we had so if you find a, a country that was uh, uh, suffered some colonialism colonialism we know colonialism leads to depletion of resources. So those such countries suffer depletion of resources. This will affect their present and will affect their development because of colonialism. That is anthropological history. Imagine a country that has suffered great slavery or slave trade. Such a country will suffer. Its present will suffer because also the past has undergone some form of suffering. So that is interdisciplinarity. It distills aspects from different disciplines and uses it to solve problems. How is it different from multidisciplinary? Here it combines it multi combines the different disciplines. We can have a discipline of sociology, discipline of environmental science, discipline of social of sociology. So then again, we need to know what sociology is. Uh, sociology is just studying about the way the way of living of people. Study about studying about the way of life. Then we are left with, with uh, also another core, another core feature of developmental studies, that is political economy approach. So we have the political economy, political economy approach. So the political economy approach for this one uh, deals with issues, uh, addresses issues to do with, uh, to deal with, over which which stroke which involve, which involve uh, power, power status, power status. We can have race and gender addresses issue to, issues to deal with power status race gender and how and how they influence influence distribution distribution of resources and how they influence distribution of resources and and their trajectory and their trajectory trajectory to development to development so we are looking at this one eh? political economic approach the directive one it deals issues eh? addresses the issues which involve to deal with power or which involve power status race gender and how they influence distribution of resources and their trajectory towards development so what do we mean by this in political economy approach uh, so for example uh, the race issue so if you to look if you are to look at race race will affect the distribution of resources for example we can give uh, an example of south africa south africa south africa the blacks 
there was there was an inequality in distribution of resources among the blacks and the whites. So political economy approach looks at development in such a perspective. If you are to have a view of gender, uh, where in some countries you will see that ladies, some third world countries, ladies are not given a right to engage in uh, political issues in politics. So this one also uh, is something that can be addressed in what we call the political economy approach because it deals with issues of power, status, race, gender, and how they influence distribution of resources and their trajectory towards what we call a development. So this is the basic definition, like how we can define, best we can define developmental studies. Like what development means, what development means. So if you look at development by definition, development is a multidimensional process, multidimensional, a multidimensional process, multidimensional process, which involves, which involves, involves positive changes, positive changes in technology, in technology, in the economy, economy, in the culture, in the culture, it is and many other fields. Uh, so development, you look at it as a multidimensional process which involves positive changes. It's a process. That means it is a step-by-step -step, uh, movement towards that development. So it's a multidimensional process which involves positive changes. These changes should be positive in the technology, in the economy, in the culture, and many other things. So whenever we look at development, so developed countries will have positive, will have active positive changes in different uh, in different disciplines like their technology, their economy, their culture, so on and so forth. So that is uh, the number one thing we need to know how to define development. So when we look at development, we shall see what we call uh, development developed countries, developed countries, and other countries that are. Underdeveloped. Underdeveloped. What we need to know about the developed countries is that these countries have undergone what we call advancement, advancement in their development, in their development. So they have undergone advancement. They have undergone these changes, the positive changes, by passing through that multidimensional process. So. Uh, the, the developed countries, what we need to know about the developed countries, they are the ones that are also known as, they are also known as the North, the North or the First World countries. So when they ask you about the North, they are these countries. The North or the First World countries or the developed countries. Why are they called the North? Because they are located, most of them are located above, above the equator. So they are above the equator. Uh, to compare them with what we call the underdeveloped countries, first of all, what are underdeveloped countries? These are countries that have uh, low, they are low in what, in what we call uh, their governance. Governance, in other words, they have poor governance. Poor governance, they have poor, poor unimproved technology. And also poor health services, health services. Some have poor environmental, poor environmental aspects, and many other things. So those are underdeveloped countries. However, all these all these are caused due to some external pressure. External. Pressures. So for a country to be called underdeveloped, it should have poor indicators like poor governance indicators, poor technology indicators, poor health service delivery indicators, poor environmental indicators, but as a result of some external pressure. And this external pressure can be 
uh, colonialism, colonialism, or attempt slave trade, or attempt slave trade. So that is what we refer to as under development. So such countries are referred to as the South. They are referred to as the South, or they are referred to as the Third World countries or the third world countries so south or third world countries and the